Hi, everyone. Thank you for your attention. I'm Gu Shu, a fourth year PhD student from the University of California, Santa Barbara. In this video, I'm going to talk about our work on designing assertions to help with quantum program testing and debugging. It is quite common to make mistakes in programming, and things are even worse in quantum, because quantum programs run in a quantum manner, but we humans live in a classical world. For example, here I took a screenshot from the GitHub repo of one of IBM's projects. It was reported that uh, this example quantum teleportation program is wrong. Actually, the order of two gates are interchanged in this program. Quantum teleportation is already one of the simplest of quantum programs and is usually considered as a quantum hollow world program. There are just uh, three qubits and six gates, and mistakes can be made even in such simple programs. So we hope to improve the reliability of quantum software. And in this study in particular, we are targeting a scenario that once we have a quantum computer, how can we test the quantum programs on it? Uh, to be clear, uh, testing is not a verification. Software verification may guarantee the correctness of a program because it will consider all possible executions under all possible inputs, but it is usually very expensive. Software testing is uh, much cheaper. You could possibly review some bugs, but you cannot guarantee the correctness. It is weaker, but still quite useful. Another key word we will talk about is assertion. The term assertion in the scenarios of software testing is a predicate on some program variables at a place in the program. When running an assertion, the program will check if the predict in the assertion is satisfied. If so, the program will continue. Otherwise, the program should abort and report the error. In a quantum scenario, an assertion, for example, in a quantum circuit can be considered as a circuit block on some qubits. And in this talk, we will figure out how to design and implement these blocks. In the rest of this talk, I will start from the theory side and then discuss some practical implementation issues. Testing a quantum program state on a quantum computer is somehow like a physicist are doing quantum experiments in their labs. So first, can we learn something from existing quantum information science? In traditional quantum information processing, one typical approach is called the quantum state tomography. Quantum state tomography can fully categorize any mixed states, but it is, not, it is usually very expensive. We need to repeat the state preparation and the measurement many, many times. Can we do something simpler and easier in computer science? The session testing can be much simpler when it can be expressed in a classical language. For example, when the predicate says a state in a classical bit string, you can just measure each qubit and see if the output matches. But in this case, the expression power is very limited. Uh, previous quantum assertions describe a quantum state properly using classical languages, and they can only express three types of states. And many complex intermediate states inside the program cannot be asserted. So we hope to have a new approach with two objectives. It should have first a very strong expressive power, and the checking itself should be efficient so that we can fast determine the satisfactory of the predicates. After some consideration, we believe that projections can be a sweet point for these two objectives. Before we construct assertions with uh, projections, let's first review some basic properties of projection operators. A projection operator is very common uh, linear operator, and you can find its definition in every linear algebra textbook. In a Hilbert space, uh, a projection will map a state onto a closed subspace of the original Hilbert space, and we use the letter B to denote a projection here. One important property of projection operators we will use in this study is that uh, each different projection operator corresponds to a unique subspace in the Hilbert space. So we can also use the letter P to denote the subspace of the projection P without any ambiguity. When a state vector or a mixed state density operator is in the subspace P, applying the corresponding projection P will not change the term because they are already in the subspace. Projections can naturally represent uh, predicates. A state is said, said to satisfy a projection P when it is inside the subspace P. The idea of using projections as predicates first appears back in 1936, even before the computer science appears. The satisfaction of a projection-based predicate can be checked using the projective measurements. 
and many physical implementations of quantum computers uh, direct and only supports uh, projective measurements. For example, uh, projection P, we can construct a uh, two output projective measurement. The measurement operator of the true outcome is just the projection itself. The other measurement operator is um, I minus P with output false, and I is the identity operator in the Hilbert space. This measurement will directly tell us whether the test state is in P or not. There are some practical issues here when we need to implement this on a, on a quantum computer, and we will talk about them later. It, the benefits of uh, projections has uh, two main points we'll discuss. The first one is that uh, projections are much better uh, than classical languages in terms of extractive power. Projections can have different ranks to represent the subspace of different sizes. Uh, for example, uh, this projection P equals to zero, zero, and it means that the correct state must be the zero, zero state. And we can also, also have a projection of rank two, like uh, zero, zero plus one, one, and the correct state can be the linear combination of zero, zero and one, one. On the other hand, we must notice that the projections cannot accurately specify all possible states. For example, uh, these states with different uh, values alpha and beta are not uh, distinguishable in the sense of projections because their subspace will always be this uh, zero, zero plus one, one subspace. Uh, this is because we are not doing the extensive tomography. But uh, later we'll see that selecting projections allows more efficient checking. Uh, before we talk about the checking efficiency, first recall that when the state uh, row uh, satisfies P, applying a projection operator will not change it. Uh, therefore, when doing this uh, constructed measurement from the projection P, with two outputs, we will have the three uh, following cases. First, uh, when rho is in P, when rho satisfies P, we will always have outcome true and the state is not changed in the measurement because it is in it. The state is in P. Uh, when the state rho is not in P, which means, okay, uh, this predicate is not satisfied, and it's possible that we have outcome false, and we, we know that the state is uh, wrong. Uh, in the third case, it is still possible that we have a wrong state that is not in P, but we still have outcome true because uh, it is a probabilistic measurement. And we can see that the late uh, the state rho prime after the measurement will satisfy P because actually the projective measurement maps the rho back to the correct subspace specified P. This actually allows runtime checking because we can run multiple assertions in one execution. A past assertion will not affect the falling execution, even if the input state of this uh, assertion is not correct. So the key question about checking efficiency is that how many executions do we need? We believe that the number is small. For, from basic quantum mechanics, we know that the probability of observing the true outcome is uh, trace P rho. So that uh, suppose we repeat this uh, checking procedure uh, by k times, the probability that we do not observe any false outcome is uh, trace p rho to the power of k. And if trace p rho is not one, then this probability will decay exponentially and we expect to see a false outcome very quickly. But what if the state is very close to the correct space? In this case, the trace p rho is very close to one and will not uh, decay very fast. We argue that uh, this error is not severe because the semantics of pro quantum programs are trace uh, non-increasing uh, non increasing quantum operations. We have the following uh, conclusion. Uh, for the same program S, uh, if we start from two inputs that are very close and this uh, distance can be bounded by a trace distance, and uh, the output of this uh, two uh, states, uh, their, dis uh, their trace distance is also very small, bounded by the same parameter. This means, okay, uh, we cannot uh, distinguish these two output states uh, by a lot. After all these discussions, uh, we cannot define the projection-based assertion. It is basically a projection P over a set of qubits uh, Q bar. The semantics of this projection is that uh, when running this it, we run it, we first construct a projection measurement based on P and then perform the measurement. 
If the measurement outcome is true, we continue. If the measurement outcome is false, we abort and report the termination location. Since our projection-based assertion will not change the test state once it is correct, we can now insert multiple assertions in one execution to enable more efficient checking. We study the statical properties of checking a quantum, a quantum program with multiple assertions, like how many executions are required to achieve a statistically guaranteed program behavior. And we also have approximate projection-based assertions. All the details are available in our paper. Before is the theoretical part of the projection-based assertion. And now let's discuss the practical implementation issues. Uh, that is, the projective measurement constructed based on a projection P may not be always executable on a quantum computer. And there are two main constraints. The first constraint is the limited measurement basis. Most quantum computers only support measurement along the computational basis. If uh, the M2 is 0, 0, for example, and M4 is 1, 1, then this measurement is executable. But when the measurement basis is in, for example, the X basis, this projective measurement cannot be directly uh, implemented. Another constraint, we call it dimensional uh, mismatch. For n qubits, the Hilbert space is uh, 2 to the power of n, the dimensional space. When you measure one qubit, the size of the space is reduced by half and it becomes a two to the power of n minus one dimensional space. In practice, we can only measure an integer number of qubits. So only projections with ranks of two to the power of an integer can be directly implemented. When the rank is not in this body set, for example, uh, a, pro a projection with rank three, it cannot be directly implemented. We propose three transformation techniques to resolve these constraints. We first solve the measurement basis problem. We can add one unitary transformation to adjust the measurement basis to the computational basis. And we have the following proposition. When the rank of the projection is 2 to the power of an integer, we can diagonalize it to find a new projection. And in this new projection, the measurement is on the computational basis, and the required transformation can also be naturally derived during the matrix diagonalization. The execution of the assertion will be first run uh, this uh, new initial UP and checking for the new uh, projection Q, and then apply the UP dagger to rotate things back. We now solve the second constraint, the dimension mismatch issue. We have uh, two cases here. Um, when the rank of P is small, which means it's smaller than 2 to the power of n minus 1, we can use the intersection of subspaces to formulate a smaller subspace. And we have a proposition for this. Uh, when this rank P is smaller than 2 to the power of n minus 1, there exists an array of projections, and each of which has the rank of 2 has a rank of 2 to the power of an integer. And the intersection of their subspaces is exactly the subspace of the original projection. Using this proposition, an assertion of rank smaller than 2 to the power of n minus 1 can be converted into an array of sub-assertions sub without dimensional mismatch problems. The only case left is when rank p is larger than 2 to the power of n minus 1. In this case, we cannot use the intersections because the projection with rank 2 to the power of n is the identity operator, which will do nothing. But we can observe that the rank of a projection p will be smaller than 2 to the power of n. And 2 to the power of n is equal to 2 to the power of n first plus 1, then minus 1. Recall that in the last case, we have solved cases for rank p smaller than 2 to the power of n minus 1. Naturally, if we can convert n to n plus 1 without changing the rank of p, the problem is solved. So we introduce an auxiliary qubit. We first initialized it to be 0. Now we have n plus 1 qubit. And then we can check for a new projection, uh, zero state tensor P. The rank is not changed and it should be smaller than two to the power of N. Then the assertion is transformed to a new assertion on the auxiliary qubit and the original qubit set Q bar. Briefly summarize, based on the rank of P, we can apply the three uh, transformation techniques according, accordingly to make all the th uh, assertions executable on a quantum computer. 
In the last minute, I want to discuss the automation issue. You may notice that we need to manipulate operators of size 2 to the power n when transforming the assertions. Also, decomposing a large integer into single duplicates and two duplicates is very hard. It is possible to have simple assertions implementation that can automatically manage it by classical computers. We propose a technique called local projections. By taking the partial trace on a large size projection, we can find small size projections on part of the system, which are sound approximations of the original P. Here is the summary. Uh, we propose to check quantum program state with projections, and it's a new sweet point for expressive power and checking efficiency. We consider some practical constraints and propose several transformation techniques to make the search executable. More examples like searching examples, numerical simulations, and the formal descriptions can be found in the paper. The proofs of all the theorems are also in the preprint. Thank you for your attention.